Anyway, Carter, welcome. Carter hit connect. Hit it. <laughs> Why is that song? Every time you hear it, don't you just like you remember? That's not where you where you were, but yeah. it's just a song. It's just like music it is shouts, the best for that. It shouts something. Yeah, you know, music is the best for that. It takes you right to, right. You know, it could be a girl. You know. Yeah, I was watching a YouTube video yesterday while I was at, at work during my lunch break at the chamber, but it was Sam Kennison, 1987 at Dangerfields Club. In New York City, and he comes out, and he's not, he's already established at that point. If you don't know who Sam Kennison is, comic, he was killed in a tragic car wreck in the Nevada desert back in the early '90s, yeah. I think. And um, he was just a brilliant comedian. He shouted. He had that that, that style where he'd shout. But uh, he was a he was an ordained minister, uh, and then just took his uh, took his act onto the stage. Hilarious. Anyway. Um, he came walking out, and he's already known, so he's established. He wore the beret, the long coat, and, yeah. but he came out in this just god awful shirt. And he's there, you know. He's there. This this shout just screams party. You know, and they, he went into his, his whole his whole rift in his act. I love Sam Kennison. He was just absolutely. He was brilliant. He was in that movie Back to School. Where Back to School. Did. And I watched that clip yeah. too. There, yeah, with that little girl asking about that. Yeah. Why did we Why did we lose Vietnam? Yeah. Pull out, of, pull out of Saigon. <laughs> Sam, Sam Kennison's the professor, and he and he, and he, he was in, in the character was a Vietnam veteran, and Rodney Dangerfield's. He's there. I'll yeah. tell you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why we lost him. Truman was a pussy. That's why. <laughs> he starts going. You have to watch it. It's hilarious. yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, well, that's I, I, who was your favorite comedian? If you had to say uh, one, Pryor. two, one, two, and three, Richard Pryor and Dave Chappelle, they're my favorites. Okay, I have to think. And, and I, I, I really like um, Carlin. So yeah, I'll tell you. I, I, Robin Williams was fantastic. He was brilliant. Though, he was brilliant. Uh, during his let's call them jet fuel days, yeah, um, he was just amazing early on. Uh, but if whole body of work, Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle, I, I think for there's me, so, there's so many. I mean, I, I watched old. I watched old Carson. Well, Johnny Carson, first of all, he was terrific yeah. as far as doing that format talk show. But he had just a He had timing. Was was just mm-hmm. brilliant. But um, like Rodney Dangerfield, the early Rodney Dangerfield when he came out on Carson was just hilarious. Yeah. Robin Williams, I mean. He, he was a force of nature type of comedian. Much like in Sam Kennison, sort of. Yeah. Um, they had that sort of. Style. It's style. In your face style. Yeah. That, you know. There's a funny, um, there's a funny Carson clip and it's about 17 minutes long. If you go into YouTube and it's Robin Williams and Jonathan Winder. Oh. oh my God! Is that because Winters? His style was dry, mm-hmm. but he was very smart, and just the way he can, he did a lot of uh, voice impressions. Mm-hmm. Um, in this one particular setting, he came out, he came out dressed as a conf- uh, Union soldier, a Union soldier. Uh, I think he was doing some show that was a character. Yeah, and uh, Williams was was already on. He came out, did his set, and then this actress, who I don't know her name, she was a Southern actress, and. Uh, She's talking about her, you know, they're always there to promote something. And she, like, looks over at Robin, or at, uh, at John Williams and says, why is he dressed like that? And Carson said, never mind, never mind. And him and Robin Williams are having their, yeah. own, their own conversation together. Robin and Williams was brilliant. out of control. He was just brilliant. Eddie Murphy was great yeah. in his prime. And, he, you know, I saw him live on, uh, he was in Fairfax County, and I saw him on, on stage. He had a great performance. Uh, Eddie was, for me, personally, Eddie was essentially a knockoff, or a more mainstream version of Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Yeah, so you had Richard Pryor, you had Eddie Murphy, and then Chris Rock. Chris Rock after that. Yeah. Um, Chappelle's completely different. And Chappelle's different, yeah. I think he's a, um, just a natural, he's, he's very intelligent stuff. If you actually listen to what he's saying, it's extremely intelligent. Well, I think all, I think all comedians are. I think they're, you know, I, I don't, I, I would agree. I, I don't think they're. I don't think they're like gregarious and extroverted people by nature. I think they sit back and kind of observe. Right. Like, absolutely. Like Eddie Murphy. You know, you can listen to Eddie Murphy's or his his show, and he's very urban, very street. But he grew up in middle class, uh, well, middle, think, middle class in, in in New York, and all of a sudden, but he he picked up all of that stuff. I, I think you kind of get two kinds. You got the ones who tell stories essentially, mm-hmm. and then you have the ones that take a view of life. And either point out the flaws or point out the funny. The funny, yeah, because that's what humor is. It's a little, right. it's a little a piece of, 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 of truth, and then they kind of wrap around. Right, yeah. Hey, imagine that they juxtapose. Absolutely, like Stephen Wright. Absolutely, Stephen. Stephen, yeah. Stephen Wright. I live yeah. in a cul-de-sac. 
yeah. the neighbors can't get out. You yeah. know, it's like brilliant. It's like, you know, it's stuff you see every day and then you see him mm-hmm. talking about it. And, and this and this current time of, um, you know, I don't want to say more being more offended, but um, it's it's even more difficult to write comedy right now. I think across the board, even if you're talking about comedic movies, um, it's hard right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you you look at some of we were talking about some of that stuff from Caddyshack or or, or mm. uh, things of that nature. You couldn't do it now. No. 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 Um, like for instance in Wedding Crashers which was only 15 years ago probably longer but yeah we yeah. Can, yeah wow really yeah but anyway they constantly say the running joke is basically whatever you did is gay mm-hmm. that's the joke yeah um, they yeah. probably yeah. couldn't get away with that now. and if you did if you said it in whatever setting now comedy can kind of get away with some of that depends on what it depends is depends who it is yeah and who's the messenger and, you know, well that's why I think um Dave Chappelle's last Netflix special was such a fantastic written piece because of the comedic writing. Because he took on everything you're not supposed to talk about. Yeah, um, it was just a masterpiece. Do you think, do you think Comedy Central, <laughs> it's Comedy Central moving forward, is going to have Comedy Central roasts? My God, you know. I think. I mean, I love watching those. I mean, I, I think you can get away with those because. It's aimed at one person that said it's okay to do it to me. Yeah, but it's but you know how it works. I know it's yeah. okay. We're gonna roast Richard Clark, but they go around. Good to see Mike McHugh here today. You know why? We're all the blah and, blah and blah blah closed. You know they they go around the whole dais. You know and they it, they, 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 they I don't say they abuse, but they they, they oh they, they abuse they, they abuse each yeah. one of them. They but they all they know it's coming their way. <laughs> like look, what, I, I forget who was being. I think maybe it was Charlie Sheen was being roasted, but um, the boxer Mike Tyson was on the dais, and I don't know if Mike had a few before he came out there, or if he was just being Mike, yeah. but man, was he, he was funny, uh, he was funny, but he also caught a lot, too, mm-hmm. and he accepted it, yeah. he was sitting next to William Shatner, I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. that one, and, I, then, I, and Shatner, you know, it, it, you know, think about him as a, you know, a storied actor, he, he did it pretty well, too, and he took the abuse. I've always thought that um, the people, Bill Burr is another one of my favorites, by the way, I've always thought that people, they don't take themselves too serious. I love when these actors, I don't know, I'm just going to use his name, David Hasselhoff, mm-hmm. how he can make fun of himself, yeah. parody himself in yeah. a movie. I think that's fantastic. Uh-huh. These, pe- these people that take themselves too serious, I just have no patience for that. Well, the one, that, the one actor that was just a comedic genius, and I think he was a black and white actor, in other words, before color came into, uh, into cinema, was Leslie Nielsen. Mm. You know, and then he found himself in the in, in air, well, airplane, right? Airplane, mm-hmm. and then the police squad movies, and he was just dry delivery, mm-hmm. uh, driven, right? He was driven in police squad. It, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting how how these people end up in that that might not be a comedian per se. I'll give you a modern day example: um, Quincy Jones's daughter. Mm-hmm. She's been in three very good comedy sitcoms, and and. She has. She wasn't a comedic actor or anything like that. And here she is in the office, um, Parks and Rec, and this other Who one. Was she um, in the office? Who was she in the office? She was Jim's girlfriend between Pam and getting married to Pam. Okay, I love the office. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's just she just kind of ended up here, and now she's in these comedy, you know, heavy hit. Remember when I first saw the office? Um, and I love that show. I love to say I thought it was. I thought it was brilliant in the way that you know how the camera. Ran. Just that that kind of raw, right? You know, and whoever thought it, I mean, imagine Ricky how, Gervais. Imagine who had to pitch that to the suits. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, he created the one in England, and they did it for a year or two. They oh, brought Ricky it over here. Yeah, that I love Ricky Gervais. That must have been a hard sell at first. Oh, yeah. to the suits. I forget who brought who brought the office. NBC I, was NBC here. Yeah, yeah. And so they had to pitch that to them. They're like, "What are you doing? The cameras jingle. People well, are get think, sick watching it." But that I think it's I like, like a lot of things. Um, it's the clout he had at that point in his career that he was able to get that done. And there's a there's a term for it. I forget what it's called, but it's like when when Michael, see, and he talks to the camera, or they talk, or the right, other characters. Right. There's a term for that, and then they go back into right, you know, the regular acting, stuff. Acting between yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, you know, Seinfeld was like that too. Seinfeld's a stand up comedian. Yeah, and uh, when they made the the pitch to him to do a show, again it was a show about nothing. They had no idea where they were going with yeah. that. And they, you know, it was him and, 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 and David, Larry David. I like Larry David's show better. Do you? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's more edgy. It's you know I like the edgier stuff. So well, Seinfeld is brilliant. Just how they brought those cast of characters. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't a big a fan on those shows. As but you never You weren't the big Seinfeld. Friends and, and, Seinfeld. And, and Seinfeld were yeah. never my. I think they're obviously they're good shows. They were on forever. So you know you can't argue with I'll that. I'll tell you who who played a, a, a excellent role in a dramatic series. Who was a stand up comedian and, I, and I, I, you got to help me with his name, but uh, Better Call Saul in Breaking Bad, the attorney. Yeah. Uh, oh God! What is his name? He's excellent, but he brings that same that that, that wit and humor to the character, the, the shyster attorney in Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. and um, Bob Bob uh, Bob. Yeah, we can look, look it up. up. Yeah, look him up. Bob, yeah. I was gonna say Bob Euchre, but that's not. It's um, um, Ross would know that. Anyway, I thought he was brilliant, and uh, I, I went back and watched some of his work as a stand-up, and you know, like, hey, this guy's got a great future. Knowing that he was going to be in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, yeah, you know, I never got really that that series on Netflix never hooked into me. Better Call Saul because it was the pre the, the pre it didn't pre catch me too. like the other one did. No, no, I watched Breaking about Bad's, half of Breaking it. Bad's awesome. Yeah, Breaking Bad was good from the beginning, and that's the problem I have now is if it don't catch me and, right happened. out of the yeah. gate. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk. Odenkirk, yeah, Odenkirk. He's he's, he's brilliant. Uh, yeah, just a, just a wonderful. He brought a lot of humor to those. You know those uh, those episodes yeah. when he appeared, and he appeared in a lot of them too. So it, it uh, it's hard to be a comedian these days. I mean, it's just hard. You yeah, can't. it's like where they. I mean, who's going to be the next one you talk about that says he's like Robin Williams? I mean, rather than just copying somebody, just some new, new, new original work. It'll be out there. That means oh, absolutely, you know, it'll be out there. You know. it, it'll be out there soon. I used um, to like when I lived in, um, and you were up in D.C. for years. Go to the various uh, improv and comedy clubs. There's a bunch of them on. There were a bunch of them on yeah. the street. When was, I was in DC, that was yeah, fun. They were really good. That was fun, and I like you know even like you, you kind I of missed that. It's a small, usually small, intimate setting, and sometimes you know they, they pick on the audience. That's why I don't sit too close. Exactly. Yeah, you don't sit too close. You don't, sit too you know? close. You yeah. don't want to be there's that. A, there's a there's one of uh, when Sam Kennison. If you look up YouTube, Sam Kennison, and when he talks about marriage. He picks this guy, and his guy's name is Michael. He's sitting right in the front left, and um, he's there. I want you to remember this face because he was getting the guy was getting married, and Sam goes into his whole holler that no. <laughs> well, last time I was in DC at the comedy club, we I had on a let's call it a golf hat. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And um, the guy started to say something. I just got up and walked out. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't gonna be a part of that. I know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you're not making fun of me get, for it can 15 get minutes. I know. It yeah. Can get brutal. I mean, but they mean it, and probably afterwards you probably would have gotten comments. Oh yeah. All but that. no, I'm you not. Know, you're, you're part of his his shtick. You know? Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not playing that game. No. Or, or, or I've seen what they do to them, the good ones. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that the really good ones, if they get heckled. They will. That's what happened to Michael Richard. Remember? Well, from, yeah, from Seinfeld. That that was his downfall as far as stand up goes. He got heckled. Well, it's funny. He, 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 he went back. the wrong direction, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, like Bill Burr, for instance. One of the things that had made his bones, so to speak, was he was doing a show with several other uh, uh, stand ups. They really went after the first one. They were in Philadelphia, and I guess it was a friend of his, and he did fifteen minutes where he just lamb basted Philadelphia to the crowd. Wow. That's and exactly. he would he would insult the Liberty Barrel and then oh, he would say fourteen minutes left. Then he went after cheese steak, cheese steak twelve steak. minutes left. Like, yeah, he just killed him. Some six and it, it was all off the cuff and it, it, and it made him Yeah. Oh yeah. He it's rips them. He rips the Flyers and the Phillies. Not to look that what's cheese this guy's steak name? Bill Burr. B U R R. B U R R Burr. Like, yeah. like the video's Burr. not good because it's in a you yeah. know um, and it was all impulse, and but yeah, he rips. That's Philly. what I mean. They're, br I mean, they're brilliant that they can see that and they can connect it, and they can turn it into yeah. a narrative. I mean, yeah. that's you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, White, the uh, smoker, um, you know, drinking. What's his name? Texan guy. Oh yeah, Ron White. Ron White. He's brilliant too. I mean, yeah, it's just brilliant. it's just simple observations. Yeah, his is more of the taking a view and yeah, and, twisting. Yeah, it a little bit. bit. That's I like I like Ron White so. Uh, I don't know. It's it's fun to go out. It's fun to laugh. You Look, know? I, there's a there's a um, Asian comedian uh, Joe Coy that is excellent, um, and his you know comedy is based on his life experiences. So obviously they're in that direction. You know, he talks about his Filipino mom and stuff like that, and it's hysterical. Yeah. Um, I think the good ones they just you know they just get it. Uh, I just think it's hard these days to weave through some of the stuff and not be 
what people call well, offensive. Well, you know, and you think about it too. Now with all the platforms, social media, there's different venues that they can they can try to break through on versus cutting their teeth at a club, which is hard. You know, mm-hmm. when in a live audience, it's different when you're just you know doing it well, in your in your home on your own you know mobile device and then putting it up on according some, on to platform. what I listen to, stand ups at least the older ones. Um, you know, just under our generation, they they hone their act by going out mm-hmm. and getting the material down. Yeah. Well, with this, you can't do that anymore. Right. So a lot of them have taken. You can't take those into clubs and things like that um, because you know they might be bad, and you know that's the whole point. Yeah. Is they're working on this material. Um, well, it was funny. You know, you go back to the old Carson shows, and even like established comedians like like Dangerfield, they'd come on, or Letterman, they'd come on, and they're trying out new stuff, and like the and audience, kill. and the audience reaction sometimes is flat, but they have a, a way, like, oh, I got to work on that one. Yeah. You know, they, they know they, they are expecting That's one right. or the other. You That's know? right. I mean, or even like like on Saturday Night Live, which is still in front of a live audience, it's it's amazing. I, I watched yesterday. I had a busy day yesterday. I watched uh, Will Farrell's audition. Mm-hmm. For Saturday Night Live, wow. he's a cat. You ever seen that? No, I haven't. Well, you should see that. Will he does Fa- the whole thing. Will right. Farrell comes out. Will Farrell comes. He and he, sit, and he um, he's. It's all quiet. It's really strange. It's just him on the on the stool, and there's there's Lauren and other people. They never show them, and it's just him. And uh, he does a, um, a Harry Carey uh, imitation with the with the wig mm-hmm. and all that, and then he does uh, a cat. He just comes out with wow. a piece of yarn and a toy. And he wow. just starts playing it with his hands like yeah. that. No, no, no vocal at all. And then his hair he carries it, pretty good. It goes down on the ground, and he, and he goes down like a cat, and he just stops, and then starts pawing it again. That was his audition. Dana Carvey's is hilarious. He just does different voices. Well, and, um, you, can, and you can hear um, it's uh, what's the guy's name? We have him on here every at, at Miller Minute. Um, mm-hmm. Miller, what's his first name? I don't know. No, Dennis. Dennis, Dennis Miller. Miller. He's there. And he's already an established cast member, and I guess he, he and Dana were friends because he's there. Well, Dennis, you'll understand this voice, and he does a Jimmy Stewart, and he just kills Jimmy Stewart. I mean, just it was just hilarious. And there's little, and it's funny, little Dana Carvey. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's unknown practically, and um, you have to watch this because if you liked Wayne's, did you watch Wayne's yeah. World? Okay, yeah. he says uh, my brother, and I forget his name, was just a, a genius with electronics, and he would like you know fix the the uh, washing machine if it went on the fritz. And he's like, there's the problem. And uh, I'd say to him, like, how do you know how to do all that stuff? And his voice of his little brother is Wayne, in, from Wayne's World. Mm. It's Garth. Right. He has that little... Right. Little, it's a, it's so how they use their what life experience. Oh, yeah. He got that from his brother. So if you watch Wayne's World and you watch that edition, that's exactly where it came well, from. Well, I was just watching a sports podcast, but Will Ferrell was on it. And um, um, they asked him what Harry Carey would say during the Bartman thing, you know, the guy that caught the foul ball. Yeah, yeah. And it was fantastic. It was off the cuff. And it was fantastic. He does good Harry Carey. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. It's a little drunker than Harry Carey. He's one of those voices that's, that, I mean, I can't do it, but I mean, if you do voices, that's one of those, because it's very, the way he talks, you know. But uh, uh, Will Farrell, I mean, Will Farrell probably listened to him on radio growing up. He, he has some, you know, some of his stuff made out, may not be a great movie, but there's some scenes and lines and things that are just hysterical. I mean, they are what they are. Yeah. I mean, look at Talladega Nights. That's a horrible movie, but there's stuff in it that's just hysterical. Yeah, no. yeah. The yeah. scene at the table where the little kids are going off is just fantastic. <laughs> if you can watch, I gotta watch that, that, I gotta watch that again. Yeah, if you can watch that and not just be <laughs> cracking up, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, you, you really need you to go. Know, and, you don't know funny. There, there's probably an operation you can get to get that stick, you know, because. Yeah. It is hysterical. It's just hysterical. Yeah, Talladega Nights, I've seen that. And who writes that stuff? That's what, Well, you yeah, know. yeah, and I think a lot of it is probably when they're on the set. Okay, it's like in Caddyshack. Yeah, just you know? go for it. It's like Bill Murray in Caddyshack, they, and, and uh, Harold Ramis directed that, and the scene where um, he has the sickle and he's chopping the uh, chrysanthemum tops off as he's watching the, yeah. lady, the ladies tee off. And he's, he, they said, okay, here's what we want. We want you to pretend you're the announcer at Augusta for the Masters. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got this. And they just let the cameras roll. And he's out there. He's hitting the... Uh, he's well, here's, the one, as a golf here's one you might could get. I was watching something like this, and, and they were comparing Vince Vaughn as this era's Chevy Chase. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. If you look at their comedy and how they go about doing it, um, and, you know, when I thought about it, I was like, you know... That's kind of close. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, Chevy, Chevy, smart Chevy, alecky. Chevy was great, S- snarky, yeah, and smug, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially in Caddyshack because they did Fletch. They they did a podcast yeah. called Rewatchables, mm-hmm. and they talked about Fletch. Fletch was great. Yeah, so they did yeah. a whole thing on that. Fletch one, Fletch two. Yeah, yeah, and then they did Wedding Crashers. That's where it came up. Yeah. They were talking about in Wedding Crashers. The whole football scene is, you know, it took like a day to do the whole scene, and they just made a lot of that up as they were going. <laughs> I'm thinking of that scene in Fletch. I think it was the first one where he goes to the hangar to, be, to see the mm-hmm. airplane, but he's pretending to be an inspector. So he has the fake teeth in there. This is a very nice airplane. That's a nice wing. That's, I mean, how do you yeah, how do you write that stuff? I, you can't. He probably I think, just pulled no, something up. Just, yeah, you got two mechanics working on the plane. You know, he's trying to find out where the plane yeah. went. You know, yeah. the itinerary of it. And but you I, think about <laughs> like you think about the wedding crashes football scene. Think about who's in that: Christopher Walken, Jane Seymour, Elizabeth. Um, is it Elizabeth Banks or no? It's Rachel McAdams. Okay, I don't know. who the Notebook? Yeah, um, Bradley Cooper, Owen Wilson, and Vince Vaughn. Oh, well, Those are heavy hitters. I love Owen Wilson for a fake football comedy scene. Yeah, I mean that's you know good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that's what you need you need to laugh. You know what? Did you, I what, think what, so. What did Jimmy v Again, say? if you can watch that table scene of the Holiday Nights and not at least smirk at something. There's something wrong with you. That. I'll, I'll do that. When it's just terrible. I get back to the chamber office. Yeah. For lunch today, I'll watch Talladega. Yeah, myself. do it on your lunch hour. Do it on my lunch hour. My lunch two hour. <laughs> Wasn't that a, you don't watch Seinfeld, but the, he's at the he's at the counter at the uh, post office, and is, he, he's talking to Kramer, who's trying to return his uh, direct mail, and you can't do that. Yeah. And uh, the, the uh, supervisor comes out and says, George, or George Costanza, why don't you take your three-hour lunch break? <laughs> Hey, hey! You postal workers, you do, you do a hard, you do a great job, especially in this heat. So we're not busting on postal. No, we are absolutely not. <laughs> not I don't want to get shot either. Yeah, so. Hey, exactly. <laughs> don't go postal on us. Let's wrap it up. All right, you All guys right, have a nice one. Thanks. Bye.